What's up guys? My name is Jake and welcome to Abandoned, episode 40. I, I know. This is the show where we talk about some of the most interesting abandoned places in the world. For this very special 40th episode of Abandoned, I wanted to tackle one of my most heavily requested topics. An iconic American and even worldwide retail brand which has been abandoning stores for years until its recent and permanent bankruptcy, now set to leave hundreds of stores abandoned across the United States. Let's take a look at Toys R Us. So in this video, I'm just going to be talking about the American side of the brand. The company has been prominent in various countries across the globe, with subsidiaries all somewhat differently affected by the closure. So I'm just going to be focusing on the American and kind of Canadian side of the gigantic retailer. In 1948, 20-year-old Charles Lazarus had founded a brand new retail store called Children's Supermarkets. It was based out of Washington, D.C., where he had originally grown up, and dealt in children's furniture retail. He began selling these items out of the corner of his father's bicycle shop, and eventually grew his children's furniture business to the point where he was able to take over the entire store. By 1957, with sales growing and demand showing promise on selling toys for older children, Lazarus opened a new store based around this concept in Maryland called Toys R Us. The brand, with its new iconic logo, became a hit with parents and children. And in 1966, Charles had been operating four different stores with sales reaching $12 million. Because of these huge sales, Lazarus had decided to take what he had and sell the company off to Interstate Department Stores, Inc. for $7.5 million. However, Interstate Department Stores weren't in a really sound financial state, and in 1974 they had filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. So the founder of the very company they had purchased, Charles Lazarus, had returned to take control of the bankrupt corporation, and rename the entire thing into Toys R Us. And just a few years later, to increase cash, the company went public on the stock market in 1978. More stores of the now growing toy chain continued through the Midwest United States, at an annual growth rate of 20%. Stores opened with its eye-catching and distinctive vertical rainbow tiles, and prominently featured their new mascot, Jeffrey the Giraffe. It didn't take long through the 1970s for Toys R Us to become a household name, and now the largest toy retailer in America. By 1980, the company had 100 stores across the country, and annual sales into 1981 at $750 million. Toys R Us effectively killed off any other toy store competitor with their efficiency and rapid expansion. But they also adopted brand new, innovative technology with electronic inventory and information systems which were implemented into their stores. In 1983, the company made another big move with the opening of their new retail division, Kids R Us, which would be 15,000 square foot stores focusing solely on children's clothing. While this division wouldn't be the huge success they figured it would be with major problems out of the gates, this didn't stop the company from expanding even further. And a year later, Toys R Us expanded internationally for the first time with new stores in Canada and Singapore. By the end of the 1980s, the booming Toy Emporium now had more than 233 stores across the states, and another 13 stores internationally. The company was also now bringing in $4.7 billion in sales, more than a 500% increase since the beginning of the decade. Into the early 1990s, Toys R Us expanded heavily in international markets, building stores in countries like Israel, Scandinavia, the United Kingdom, and many more. This was a rather effective attempt to use the already juggernaut brand from the United States, and apply it in different and new markets, hoping to scoop up some of the new market share. This led the company to its new height of sales in 1994, with $8.7 billion. However, this year also marked the ending of Charles Lazarus' CEO position, as he was replaced by Michael Goldstein. While Lazarus remained in the company as a chairman, he was no longer a chief executive leading the company, a position he had successfully been in for 45 years. With the new change, the company underwent a restructuring campaign with efforts to streamline merchandise and close underperforming stores. This effort also included new Kids R Us stores and the introduction of Babies R Us. The main stores would receive new renovations, and in 1997, the company acquired a baby retail chain of 78 stores and reformatted them into the new Babies R Us brand. This division of the company was actually quite successful out of the gate, earning $600 million in sales just within the first few years. 
However, in the late 1990s, the market began to change, and as a result, so did the company. Perhaps also their fortune. A new rising retail chain called Walmart began offering low prices on children's toys and especially diapers. Walmart suddenly became a direct competitor of Toys R Us, and around the same time, the internet was becoming more and more mainstream. And as a result, Toys R Us had set up their own website and e-commerce shop. However, competition continued to mount against the retailer. By the late 90s into the early 2000s, almost everything new Toys R Us tried outside of their Babies R Us division proved costly and pretty much unsuccessful. During this time, the company had also killed off its Kids R Us division. The retailer continued to be a popular stop to grab toys in the holiday season. However, outside of those booming weeks, the brand was losing regular customers. On top of this, Toys R Us opened its new flagship store in Times Square, a very costly endeavor that looked incredible, but wasn't really worth the cost. By this time, Toys R Us had a staggering 1,559 stores worldwide, with 701 of them being in the United States. The company had also reached its highest net sales ever at almost $12 billion. And while competition grew, Toys R Us was honestly doing fine. While their sales were dropping a little from the 1990s, their debt was manageable, the company had struck an attractive deal with Amazon.com, and the retailer was profiting in the millions. Toys R Us would have to take on billions of dollars worth of debt to start having problems. And that's exactly what happened. In July of 2005, the publicly traded retailer was involved in a leveraged buyout. Three individual investment companies took control of Toys R Us's shares, and pretty much outright purchased the retailer for $6.6 .6 billion. Obviously no one, not even these three firms, had $6 billion in extra cash to spend, so a lot of it was borrowed money. This meant Toys R Us was now taking on nearly $5.5 billion in long-term debt, and the company would have been taken off the stock market into a privately held entity. This was an extremely risky move for any successful company, and Toys R Us would have to perform very well in the coming years to stay afloat. However, things were not going well for the retailer, as online sales became more prominent in the industry, with Target now jumping in the mix. Toys R Us's prearranged deal with Amazon ended in a costly legal suit after Amazon had begun selling competitors' toys on their site. Toys R Us then began purchasing online toy site competitors, and while this did reduce competition, it also added more debt to the already enormous amount they had. However, sales were reaching $13 billion, with over $300 million in net revenue. Certainly positive growth, but their outstanding debt was eventually going to become a huge problem. By 2010, Toys R Us opened around $800 million worth of stock back up to the public in hopes they can raise money to pay off some of its ever-mounting debt. While the company was operating more than 1,600 stores across the world, competition was becoming even more fierce as Target, Walmart, and the ever-expanding Amazon.com began to dominate the toy market. Toys R Us lost a huge percentage of their market share to the now leader, Walmart. By 2012, the downslope of the company became even more apparent with their net sales at $12 billion and profit of $239 million. While that's still an enormous amount of money, the brand continued to decrease in actual profits and lost hundreds of millions of dollars in sales. The toy retailer was in serious trouble as debt mounted and competition grew. By the next year, with all of these considered, and with very slow holiday sales, for the first time, Toys R Us had lost $210 million. This was really an eventuality of the situation the company had been in for a while. But now, it was finally collapsing. While Toys R Us.com was honestly doing pretty well for the company, it was no match for the now gigantic online retailer Amazon. Sales and profit for Toys R Us continued to fall by huge chunks quarter over quarter, and by 2015, the flagship store they sunk so much money into closed permanently after only 14 years of operation. The company was essentially in crisis mode, attempting to save as much money as possible as sales dropped, and Toys R Us continued to close stores across the country in order to save on operating costs. But this also meant that less stores means less opportunities to sell stock, which meant sales decreased even more into 2016. By 2017, pretty much the perfect storm of problems had plagued the struggling corporation. 
Toys R Us had finally run out of cash, and was really no longer able to operate the way they were currently structured. So on September 19th, 2017, Toys R Us, both in the United States and Canada, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. The company brought in a restructuring firm in hopes they can find a way to turn a profit for the crucial upcoming holiday season. However, the end was in sight for the iconic children's retailer. The decision to file for bankruptcy just before the all-important holiday season was a huge mistake. Not only were consumers a little hesitant to buy products from a publicly bankrupt company, but other retailers saw this as an opportunity. Walmart, Target, and Amazon, which were Toys R Us's largest competitors, all began to undercut the retailers' prices, making the decision to shop at Toys R Us pretty much obsolete. During this time, the toy companies themselves who Toys R Us buy stock from to sell were becoming hesitant to even accept orders from the retailer, fearing that Toys R Us was in such heavy debt they wouldn't even be able to make payments. On top of all of this, the general fact among the industry was that toy sales were relatively down for 2017, and for a retailer who exclusively sells toys and is in dire need to make the holiday season profitable, well, this was it. On March 14th, 2018, Toys R Us had officially announced the company will be liquidating and closing its 800 remaining stores in the United States and laying off nearly 33,000 employees. Over the past few years, the company had been closing stores across the country, some being left entirely abandoned. And I think with nearly 800 more stores closing down, many won't find a new tenant right away. And that's going to leave a lot of stores, especially in economically depressed areas, abandoned and vacant for quite possibly a very long time. Across the country, what's left of the iconic toy store is now an empty shell of what used to be a Toys R Us store. Some in better shape than others, almost all of which with those distinct colors and themes throughout. Hinting at what was. One day, all of these abandoned stores will be taken or demolished, and at that point, the remaining remnants of the once powerful toy chain will be lost in the United States. That's not to say that Toys R Us will disappear entirely, though. While the main company collapsed in the United States, most of their international branches still remain open. That's not to say it'll continue this way, but branches like the Canadian Toys R Us stores were bought out entirely and will remain under the Toys R Us name with a new owner. Honestly, Toys R Us never deserved the fate it got. Even towards the end, despite all of its built competition, the company was still bringing in close to $12.5 billion in sales. It was just their lengthy fight with debt, which honestly could have been very much avoided if the three companies who took it over didn't put so much debt on the shoulders of the retailer. It just took many years of building liabilities and slower sales to ultimately bring down the colossal retailer. While there was hope that a restructuring effort in 2017 would hopefully bail the company out, their horrendous holiday season was the last straw. For many people, including myself, it's incredibly sad to see this happen. I very much remember going to the store, often begging my parents for one of those mini car things. I was obsessed with Jurassic Park as a kid, and I remember visiting the store in Times Square and being enthralled by the Jurassic Park section. While the American company no longer exists, the brand will likely live on in other countries for other cultures to enjoy. And while it may have been a staple of yours and many others' childhoods, in some parts of the world, it'll continue to do that for millions, just like it had been famously doing for the past 70 years. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Abandoned. I really am interested in hearing your personal stories with the iconic retailer and what your thoughts are on the future of Toys R Us. Patreon support really does help me a lot on the production side of things, so please go check me out there. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. And thank you very much for watching.